Hi, today's topic is sleep cycles. More precisely, what are they, how long are they, and what makes them change? My name is Jelte and I'm one of the long-term administrators of the Polyphasic Discord, as well as one of the main authors of the book and website polyphasic.net. As such, I have been tracking my sleep for several years using the Zio Sleep Tracker, as well as seen hundreds of logs of others using sleep trackers. So today's topics are first a quick refresher on sleep cycles. What are they? What do they do? Afterward, we'll continue with how long a sleep cycle lasts typically, how you can track them and what the implications are for your alarm times. What are the different sleep stages again and what do they do? I've talked about this before in greater detail, link will be in the description. First off, NRM1. This stands for non-REM sleep 1. NREM1 is a very light sleep stage that's only used as a transition between wake and sleep or sleep and wake the other way around. Next up there's NREM2, the regular light sleep stage. NREM2 occurs between all of the other sleep stages as a transitional stage. It's also got some more functions but that's too much for today. Then there's NREM3 or SWS. SWS is the sleep where declarative memories are formed as well as a lot of physical restoration processes in the body happen. This is also the stage where metabolic waste clearance is flushed from the brain. This is a very important sleep stage to get sufficient of. Also, it's really hard to wake directly from SWS. The last stage is REM sleep. REM is also known as dream sleep because it's the stage during which most of your dreams happen. During this stage, emotional, procedural and temporal memories are forged. As said before, more details can be found in the previous video, link in the description. Now, on to the main question. How long is the sleep cycle? Let's jump right in. As is often the case in biology, the actual answer is, it depends. But depends on what? Normally. Sleep cycles are between 80 and 120 minutes, averaging out to about 90 minutes. Although the average length varies between persons, for a single person a sleep cycle is remarkably stable, both within the same night as well as between different days. Now this is very useful because we can use this property to wake up at exactly the right time. In this hypnogram you can see the way a night's sleep is usually structured. Within one sleep cycle, you start off with NREM2, then SWS, NREM2 again, then some REM, and finally NREM2 again. This is the basic structure of a sleep cycle. As you see, the length of each of these segments varies depending on the placement during the night. These variances are mostly attributed to the hormonal balances regulated by the circadian rhythm. A sleep cycle is defined to last from the end of the previous REM period until the end of the current one. The first 25-ish minutes are mostly spent in light sleep. After this, the SWS stage begins. This stage typically lasts for 35 up to 60 minutes depending on the SWS need of the person as well as melatonin levels. These melatonin levels are the main thing that are influenced by the dark period, of which we'll have an upcoming video soon, so make sure to subscribe. After this, another few minutes are spent in NREM2. The REM section of the first few sleep cycles is very short usually. The second sleep cycle repeats in a similar way. From the third cycle onward, it's common to no longer have any SWS in the cycle. However, the cycle length stays the same. From this point in the night, the REM section of the sleep cycle starts to lengthen as circadian morning approaches. In some cases, the last cycles can have even up to an hour of REM sleep. So then, as we've discussed, sleep cycles are pretty consistent for a person, but they vary quite a lot between persons. So what's going on? There are four main reasons for this. First, there are simply interperson differences. Not everyone is made the same and this also is true for sleeps. Second, high sleep needs for one of the sleep types 
can lengthen the cycles in the evening or in the morning slightly. However, this is quite a minor variance. The third reason is sleep decompression. Sleep decompression causes sleep cycles to lengthen, mostly caused due to unstructured sleeping schedules. Sadly, most of this extra length just means more light sleep. The fourth reason is related. It's the opposite of the last one. It's called sleep compression and is most often caused by a very rigid schedule combined with splitting up of sleeps. This often happens on a polyphasic schedule. Now that you know what a sleep cycle is and what it's about supposed to do, you must be wondering how long your sleep cycles are. As is often the case, there's two ways to find out. One is easy and one is cheap. The easy way is to just follow the 132 easy steps to build your own EEG. Now, seriously though. First off, the easy way. The easy way involves tracking your sleep carefully over several days. If you sleep until you wake up naturally, you've found the end of a sleep cycle. So, if you track the time when you go to sleep and when you wake up carefully over the course of several days, you can estimate how long your sleep cycles are. If the length of your sleep is on average about seven and a half hours, you can often just divide your total sleeping time by five and there's your answer. However, if you wake up quite a bit earlier on some days, you can split your results into two groups. The first group is your results of five sleep cycles. The second group will only be having four sleep cycles. So if you divide the long group by five and the short group by four, you should end up with a very similar answer and that's your result. A few minutes variance is to be expected though, so don't stress on the results too much. Time to fall asleep can also be a factor in this. The other option, which is also quite easy still, is to get a commercially available EEG device. These Zeos though are no longer readily available so you would need to look on eBay for them. Do note that other types of sleep trackers like wrist-worn fitness bands are often unreliable. More information about that in the description. Once you know your sleep cycle length, there's something really cool you can do with this. You can make sure you wake up very easy every time. Almost. If you were to wake up during SWS, you'll feel bad and groggy. However, if you wake up right at the end of the last REM stage, you'll be feeling just great and refreshed. So if you set your alarm, set it for a multiple of your sleep cycle lengths away from your bedtime. I hope this information helped you. Let us know in the comments if it did. See you in the next video. Sleep well. If this video matters to you, click subscribe and the bell icon to get all the latest info on Sleep Mastery. We upload three times a week. Also consider donating via our Ko-fi page. This keeps the site online and helps our Discord and Reddit communities gather data. Have any questions? Chat with us directly in our Discord. See the links below.